morning. Good morning and welcome. It's fantastic to be back here in New York City. Um, you know, we have a lot to show you this morning. You know, it's hard to imagine uh, that it was just 10 months ago that ChatGPT uh, first came out. And it's clear, like if you just look around since then, that something new is happening in our industry and far beyond, and it's exciting. And we've done a lot in these last 10 plus months. Uh, you know, GitHub Copilot is turning natural language into programming language. In fact, last night in my hotel room, I was so excited to have access to Copilot chat in my personal account. You know, finally, it's awesome. Uh, you know, it's. Even think, take ChatGPT and Bing Chat. I mean, what should I say? I mean, in a market that's dominated by one player, you know, we are striving to breed some innovation and life into it. Um, and even with Microsoft 365, uh, there's a wait list. I mean, it's crazy. It's kind of like the 90s are back. Uh, it's exciting. <laughs> Uh, to be in a place where we are bringing some software innovation and really having fun, enjoying uh, this entire journey. Of course, it's not just about the co-pilots that uh, we are building. Uh, it's all the apps that are being built by partners, you know, whether it's Spotify or Shopify to the London Stock Exchange to Epic. Uh, each piece of software from consumer tech to financial tech to healthcare tech is changing. And we've learned a lot in these last several months. Uh, it's been energizing to see and hear uh, what uh, you all have been able to do with these new capabilities. Uh, from developers who say, finally, Copilot has brought joy and flow back to their work, uh, to artists who say it sparked their creativity, to all of us as knowledge workers and first-line workers, right, who are able to rid ourselves of just this drudgery of sometimes this work. Uh, business leaders who finally have a new tool uh, to be able to reimagine, simplify, optimize business processes, whether it's sales, marketing, finance, uh, customer service, what have you. Uh, in some sense, perhaps the biggest uh, learning is what got us all started whatever, in the last 70 plus years around this computing revolution in the first place. You know, I recently had a chance to reread uh, a book, uh, Bootstrapping, which I think came out perhaps in the early 2000s. It's the story of Doug Engelbart and his life, his vision. You know, obviously, uh, everyone knows about his contributions to some of the seminal things that we all enjoy in personal computing, whether it's the mouse or the graphical user interface. But the thing that he writes about, um, you know, how he chose to sort of get into the computing industry and motivated his life's work, deeply resonated with me. Uh, he felt that both the complexity and the urgency of the humanity's problems, both big and small, were growing at such a fast rate that our ability to cope with them was being challenged. And he envisioned, therefore, a new system of computer and human collaboration that could augment human capabilities and give each of us more agency in tackling these challenges. And that's always been the ultimate dream of this entire computing revolution. And now, as we stand here today, we have a couple of new capabilities. To me, there are two real underlying technology breakthroughs with this new generation of AI. The first is that we now finally have. I mean, we've been talking about Nui for decades, but I feel we are at the place where we finally have a new natural interface. And it starts with language, but it's going to quickly go beyond that, right? You have to see, to hear, to interpret, and make sense of our intent and the world around us. And a new reasoning engine, which helps us make sense and find patterns in all that is digitized, right? Which is people, places, things. And together, they have created what is essentially a new category of computing. This is as significant as the PCs in the 80s, the web in the 90s, mobile in the 2000s, the cloud in the 2010s. Just like you boot up an operating system to access applications or use a browser 
to navigate to websites, you will invoke a copilot to do all these activities and more, to shop, to code, to analyze, to learn, to create. And we believe it has the potential to help you be more knowledgeable, more productive, more creative, more connected to the people and things around you. It starts with building on what we have learned to date. You know, we've seen that the most magical and empowering moments people have experienced with AI is when it's informed with the context that extends way beyond what's in front of them. For instance, you know, when you're able to create a PowerPoint presentation, taking advantage of all the conversations you previously had in Teams, Outlook, even the files you have, or when you're able to plan a family vacation based on your preferences, communications, and what Bing knows about the destination you're trying to go to. The more context and memory a co-pilot has, the more planning capabilities it has, the more valuable of a companion it becomes. This requires that what we think of today as separate categories, search, productivity, operating systems, devices, all come together and evolve. So the context and intelligence of the web, your work data, and what you're doing in the moment on your device are presented together in a single unified experience centered around you, informed by your preferences and permissions. But it's a lot more than that. Uh, we think there's also an opportunity beyond work and life to have one experience that works across your entire life. After all, you know, you're a salesperson by the day, a, a musician by the night, a manager and a parent, a shopper and a creator. And this requires a real rethink, a user experience scaffolding that cuts across devices, operating systems and applications. And that's what brings us here today. That's why today we're announcing Copilot, our vision for everyday AI companion for you. Copilot is one, yeah. You're gonna see a lot of it. Copilot is one experience that runs across multiple surfaces, understands your context, brings the right skills to you when you need them, it adapts to you. You no longer have to be the orchestrator of your apps, operating systems, and devices. We are building Copilot into all of our most used products and experiences and allowing you to summon its power as a standalone app as well. From Bing and Edge to Microsoft 365 and the newest version of Windows, today we will show you how Copilot can make your life better. And we're introducing exciting new Surface devices that bring together these innovations and innovation in silicon hardware and software all coming together. No matter the context you're in, no matter whether you are at work, school, or home, no matter your device, operating system, or app, the Copilot is always going to be there to help you. It simplifies the complexity we face today. You can see this in this picture built by Bing Image Creator, in fact, powered by Dolly 3. Um, and it's exciting to see this kind, you know, it's kind of like your PC now is kind of becoming your CP. We believe Copilot will fundamentally transform our relationship with technology and usher in a new era of personal computing, the age of Copilots. And an era that uplifts every person, community, industry, and country. You know, I started at Microsoft when our mission was to put a PC in every home and every desk. And today we have a vision for a co-pilot that can empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So with that, I'll hand it over to Yusuf and the team to show you more. Thank you all very, very much.